have a special presentation by Michael Hirsch, who's the Regional Director, India, Mobileye Vision Technologies Limited, on artificial intelligence and India's road safety mission. Uh, he's uh, based in uh, the company's uh, corporate headquarters and R&D headquarters in Jerusalem, Israel, and uh, Mr. Hirsch heads mobilize operations in India. His current focus is on establishing the infrastructure necessary to support mobilize collision avoidance technology and black spot mapping throughout India. May I welcome Michael Hirsch to the stage. Ek mahet vapon mission hai. Ham sab milkar agle dashak mein das lakh se ziyada longon ki jaan bacha sakte hain. Ham ye kaise karenge? Main apko bata dunga. I am Michael Hirsch, Regional Director for India at Mobileye Vision Technologies, an Intel company. Mobileye provides the ADES or Advanced Driver Assistance System technologies and has been doing so to the vast majority of vehicle manufacturers for over a decade. This has been an ongoing process and conversation with those vehicle manufacturers that has brought us to the point where we have recently, together with partners, committed to make autonomous driving a reality at the beginning of next decade in 2021. This is a monumental task. It does not only involve us, and it has been touched upon, we're talking about infrastructure, regulation, and other considerations, but as far as our task goes, we have identified what we call the three pillars of autonomous driving. The first of these is sensing, knowing what is happening immediately outside of the vehicle. The second is mapping, having precise understanding of what lies ahead so the vehicle can safely deliver its occupants to its destination. And the last of the pillars of the three pillars of autonomous driving is driving policy. What now do we do with that in order to negotiate our way safely? I will show you very briefly what the three of those look like, and we're talking about technologies that are already existing, and I should add that if we say that autonomous driving will become a commercial reality in 2021, it is already a practical reality with us at Mobileye headquarters in Jerusalem, and you're all invited to come and visit me and be hosted at Mobileye headquarters and experience autonomous driving. It is already a reality. So sensing is understanding what is happening immediately outside of the vehicle. High precision mapping, up to 10 centimeters, needs to be updated constantly. We have uh, understood that if we already have 20 million visual sensors, cameras out there, they can be our data collectors. And the third, pillar of autonomous driving, the third mission that we must accomplish, and we do not shy away from the real world, and I've just flown down from Delhi, and I'm back and forth a lot. We need to confidently and safely and with due diligence take occupants and negotiate situations like this. You are looking at our algorithms working. That is to say, we do not shy away from the fact that we need to negotiate Delhi traffic in the long term, or, or come onto a roadway, cross four lanes, and then get off. So this is certainly very exciting development, uh, but I would uh, agree with uh, Sri Anil Srivastava when he, when he stated that he does not believe that this is likely to be a reality in the immediate future in India. And I would go so far as to say that I do not believe that we will enjoy the fruits of autonomous driving uh, myself included, but certainly here in India, in the coming decade and perhaps beyond. But, and this has also been touched on by the panel in the, uh, in the previous session, we have a crisis situation. We have a crisis situation here in India. And the recognition and commitment to tackle this is coming from the very top. We have a clear directive that traffic accidents and deaths on the road must be halved within five years. I would, by the way, um, 
put it to you that the figure may be higher than 150,000, 1.5 lakh, because many times I've been told that there are incidents in rural areas that are not reported. If nothing is done, or if not enough is done, India, you as Indians, are going to lose 3.21 of million of your co-patriots on the road by the year 2030. Those are deaths, two to three times that many injuries. Everyone has a family, okay? The impact is catastrophic and far beyond, I think, what anyone can grasp. And I would put it to you that if you believed, if you had an inkling that an adversary could inflict upon your nation even 1% or 1 promille of this suffering, you would do everything in your power to stop it, and the good news is we can. With autonomous driving, I told you, this is something that is very exciting. It's going to happen, and it is going to happen in India in the longer term. But the question is, how do we take the technologies that we have amassed and developed until now in order to solve this crisis of 3.21 million people that are going to lo you lose their lives on the roads before the end of the next decade? And the answer is that we, first and foremost, need to understand why accidents take place. And I think this is absolutely a continuation of the panel discussion that took place here. Accidents take place around the world because of human error. That is to say, more specifically, inattention, or inattention two to three seconds prior to the accident taking place. And to put it in other terms, nobody gets into a vehicle intending to have an accident. Even if they're young, they're inexperienced, they want to show off to the girlfriend, whatever the case may be, nobody gets into a vehicle having to have an accident. But we have 200 people losing their lives on the road in India every day. So <clears throat> if a driver inattention, and more specifically, driver inattention, in the two to three seconds before the accident taking place, is what is causing the vast quantity and mass of accidents in India, how can we, and this is what I came here for today, to talk about autonomous driving, how can we take the technologies that we are already developing and have perfected for autonomous driving and use them today, this afternoon, to save over one million lives in the next decade, as I told. And the answer is, that we will take the first pillar of autonomous driving. We have already taken the first pillar of autonomous driving, which is sensing, and used our sensing technologies and abilities to provide drivers with real-time warnings as to what is happening outside of the vehicle. Put another way, you land on the moon or send a probe to Mars, as India has done, by the way, faster and a tenth of the cost than anyone else did. When you do that, stuff ends up in the kitchen or in the car. So we are leading the autonomous driving revolution, but take a look what we already have made available in order to combat the scourge that is killing so many people on the roads today. The core sensing warnings technologies, collision avoidance technology, is now available on Indian roads, is already available, is already installed, it's already out there, including in Hyderabad, I have news for you. And this is provided in a retrofit platform that can be installed in almost any vehicle on the roads, from cars through to light commercial, buses and trucks. This provides forward collision warning if some guy is slow down in front of you so you don't plow into him. Lane departure warning, if I unintentionally leave my lane, on a dark road at night, I'm tired and I haven't noticed and I go into oncoming traffic. Helping me keep my distance, headway monitoring and warning, pedestrian and cyclist collision warning, vulnerable road users, speed limit indication, maybe I haven't noticed or maybe my fleet manager would like to know if I'm as a bus driver that I behave very well when I'm at my remedial lessons but I actually go over, in, uh, over the speed limit when I'm carrying passengers. And I will show you what all of these features look like, and I hope we have sound, in the following video. And we don't have. So, Mobileye, <coughs> Mobileye Ford Collision Warning is constantly looking ahead and looking at the road exactly as you do, 
The difference is, however, that it is looking all the time. So we are classifying objects. I wish to be perfectly clear here. This is not what opens supermarket doors. This is not reverse sensors. This is artificial intelligence. It is emulated, emulating human beings in order to ask questions instantaneously and get answers. The second thing we want to know when we are driving, where are we in relation to what is happening, we are in relation to the road, the, road, the road markings, and this we are able to do by sensing both the left and right lane, uh, lane markings and providing timely warnings to the driver, as you can see here, in this particular, particular case, driving on the right. The driver has veered into oncoming traffic. We provide them with an elbow in the ribs, and as I say, everybody gets into a vehicle in order to arrive safely at their destination. We don't just wait to have the accident. We help you keep a safe distance. Again, we're talking about the same sensing technologies that are being used to drive the autonomous driving revolution. So we will provide a friendly warning to private motorists or to fleet or to bus drivers or to fleet drivers in truck and transport fleets to keep a safe distance. And what we actually see happening is that this results in a vast improvement in driving behavior, and even, by the way, in a, in a sharp reduction in fuel consumption and the total cost of ownership. Vulnerable road users, pedestrians and cyclists, we have not forgotten them. We are able to detect during the daytime at this stage. Uh, 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 from children through to grown-ups, we recognize them as people because they are walking and they have legs. It's vision technology. I stress, this is not radar and this is not LIDAR. We see that that is a person. Watch out. If either he doesn't stop or you don't stop, there is going to be a collision and we see here safely avoided. Speed limit indication. We are reading the speed limits as we go and providing this information to the driver. This is not intended as a, as a penalty or in order to enforce speed limits, although most certainly, and I will touch on this following, if we are to hook up to a fleet management system, then you can be sure that a fleet manager will be very interested to know if his driver is going over the speed limit. We are able to provide additional features. You can see one here on if we take a, 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 an overnight a Hyderabad a Bangalore a run, we are able to raise and lower the high beams for the driver so that he is maintained, he does not need to deal with this. It's a, a little extra something we're giving the driver and makes for safe driving. So the question is, what does all this have to do with India? And we've heard it here today. And the answer, and this is not, uh, this is not an anecdotal answer as you will see, but the answer is, that this has everything to do with India, and it has more to do with India than any other country. Because if I'm in Germany or Singapore or in Japan, and I have these technologies, they come in to fill in for where the infrastructure and the technology has not provided the answer. But between you and me, and again, this has been touched upon when we heard about um, uh, taking a bus to Manchester and so forth, Infrastructure in developed countries is better maintained and it is not bursting at the seams as it is here in India. Whatever degree of infrastructure development you take, you, you make in India, this is totally to be welcomed and, and, and it, it is, uh, uh, it's something that cannot be done without. But it will never, ever be enough. It, <clears throat> the answer is how do we provide infrastructure in addition to this infrastructure development that is always going to be bursting at the scenes and always we're going to be looking out for those black spots. And the answer is that we will put the technology this afternoon, tomorrow morning, into the vehicles. I'm going to skip here because I've been asked to, to, to be brief, um, a short um, view of um, uh, these technologies being utilized in public transport around the world. But I will just come to one case study, which I think is, is wonderful, which is uh, of Rev Car Hire, based in Delhi, that have led the way and taken on these technologies within their fleet, Ford collision warning, lane departure warning, headway monitoring and warning, pedestrian collision warning, speed limit indication, and over 400,000 kilometers after piloting this system, they expected to encounter 
an accident every 22,700 kilometers because that's what had happened until then. What has happened is that the accident rate in Delhi, in Delhi, that crazy place where there's no lane markings and, and, uh, and um, street signs and traffic lights are only there for a recommendation and it's a jungle and everybody is out there just to, to get to their destination. They don't, they don't care a hell about anywhere. I know it all. I'm there. I'm back and forth and I'm in Bombay, I'm in Delhi, I'm in Bangalore. In Delhi, autonomous driving sensing technology is already being applied to reduce accidents in a car hire fleet to the tune of 74%. Think of the significance of that. These are not drivers who are employees who are told that they must heed the warnings. These are paying customers who certainly did not want to hire a car in order to have some damn machine beep and tell them how to drive. But Rev, with the, the help of our trusted uh, Mobileye distributor here in India, who has a stand here in uh, F5 in uh, hall number one, this technology is here now for installation. Rev, as a result of this experience, has motored on ahead, and I'm happy to say is now installing another 150 vehicles, 180 vehicles already, imagine them lined up with all of this autonomous driving uh, technology that is not there for the autonomous driving. It's there in order to stop the accidents in real time and it works. It works in India. Please come and speak with us and understand how it will work. I will, uh, you can Im imagine of course that uh, the Indian OEM sector is very much, I would say not in our sites, but we are very much in the sites of the Indian OEM sector. Nobody, whether it be from the Tatas and the Mahindras, and, uh, is waiting for the regulation to come into force. They are very proactive. And I'm happy to announce that my, I did not start with this, but I should have, my primary ob objective is to domesticize this technology in India. I do not need to get onto a plane to, to, to have it installed here. We have chartered next-gen solutions who are able to provide it now as a finished product. And I'm very happy to announce that existing tier one su supplier to most of the Indian OEMs, <coughs> Nippon Audio Tronics, based in Noida, Nippon Audio Tronics, is now able, is now providing our integrated PCB solution and will work with OEMs in order to make that a reality. Beyond that, beyond that, we're able to take these real-time warnings and channel them into existing fleet management systems in order to give an invaluable means to drive a monitoring and assessment. And if we overlay those warnings on a map, we are able to drill down, and you spoke of uh, mapping hotspots here in India, for example, we are able to drill down and see where are we getting the warnings, because the warnings, even if the accident does not take place, are an indication of near misses of dangerous areas in the infrastructure. Until now, the black spots, and you heard it here today, the black spot map in India is based on real deaths that took place. We are able to, to map black spots in India, not on the basis of deaths that took place, but on the basis of accidents that could have happened and did not happen, but we want to know about them, and we do. We see a school here with the gate open. We understood that there are many near misses there. The hedge is very high. The bus is coming around the corner. All of that we received through using our system, taking the data, overlaying it on the map, and here is a hot spot without anyone, any child, God forbid, having to lose their life before we go and trim the hedge and close that back gate. That is the power of what we're able to do. We have already started to do it in India, and we together will achieve Sri Nitin Gadkari's uh, vision of reducing the road toll by 50%, and I say, why stop at 50%? Why stop at 50%? Because I think I've shown you now that we have the technology to go way beyond that and save almost all of those lives that could be lost in the next decade. Think of your time.